Welcome back to the second part of the Avalonian Oracle. Okay, the Lady of the Lake, that's what I call her. We're at chapter 4 and we're halfway through the book since there are um, eight, uh, uh, what you call it, eight, eight chapters. Okay. Okay, I'm going to start off the second half with the cycle 4, uh, chapter 4. The 13 moons of Avalon. Of Avalon, the 13 moons of Avalon is a system for deepening our connection with the yearly cycle by harnessing lunar energies to assist us in our understanding of our inner process. It is a modern creation but it is rooted in Welsh mythos and draws upon native herbal wisdoms, including pharm pharmacopoeia of the physicians, that's pharmaceutical stuff like herbalism and medicine, uh, of Maifia, uh, I can't pronounce that, it must be Welsh, a reclaimed system of herbal immersion it is a powerful tool to connection with the energies of Avalon, the lessons of her goddesses, and the corresponding energies within ourselves. This system of Avalonian herbal moons is both a complement to and a deepening of the work of the Avalonian cycle of healing. Using both cycles concurrently will improve an empowering focus of your journey to the realms of Avalonian, uh, Avalon and the pathways to the spirit. And then it goes into explanation of each moon cycle. But I won't go into that, but I'll just like moon one, moon of initiation, Mugworth. So we're going back to Harry po Potter system here. <laughs> first full moon when sun is in scorpio and then you've got all the sun in sagittarius capricorn uh, aquarius pisces uh, what the, the moons are uh, called and like the uh, sun in aries sun in taurus moon eight is moon of liberation red clover trifolium pratens first moon when sun is in Gemini. So, and then it goes, it's got 13 moons. And there was a 13 zodiac sign, and that was the, um, the serpent, the serpent carrier, I think it was called, the 13th moon. But here, this is, they have 13 moons, like 13 and four, 14, 14 moons. That is the uh, the the fourteenth moon. That is the moon of the cycle. Queen Anne's lace. Dracus Carota. That's the Welsh. Total lunar eclipse. So there could be moon eclipses that exist. Okay. Now, this is really um, you do get all the uh, information on the moons here and what they mean, and. and the history and how they're trying to teach it and this is beautiful if you uh, are a, a Wiccan then this is a real good book with the um, Pagan Ways Derek Tarot as well this is the moon initiation this is goddess Gerdwin moon first full moon when sun is in Scorpio full moon season late autumn so that is quite nice that you can use these cards by the looks of it. And the keywords is for time, to find out time. Keywords, starting a new cycle, gathering resources, assessing situations, seeking solution, solutions, acknowledging personal power, honoring our inner self. Then we go to the moons of 
Um, distillation, moon, moon of distillation. Moon of distillation. Right. And that is uh, Goddess Serdwin as well. And that's the full moon in Gemini, early winter. And the herb, you've also got a herb with it, and that's yarrow. And yarrow was prized by many ancient cultures as a kind of panakia or heal all. Uh, so you get more uh, Wic Wiccan um, information in this book. And this, uh, alchemy, this card means alchemy, creativity, catabolism, um, breakthrough, refining, refinement, hidden gifts, communion, and self-awareness. Well, I'll certainly be reading this book. Then we have the moon of transform, uh, transformation. The moon of transformation. And that is also goddess Zerdwin. And that's the full moon when sun is in Capricorn. Full moon in Cancer, mid-winter. Change, transformation, wisdom, earned, elemental, balance, meeting challenges, applied wisdom. And then we've got the moon of germination. And that's rebirth. Well, that's quite easy. In the fish, in the animal kingdom, and in the human. And this is Goddess Gerdwin, moon. First full moon when sun is in Aquarius. Full moon in Leo. Season late winter. Herb Verveine. Verbena offic officinalis. Okay. Then we have the moon of evocation. I love this deck. That's Goddess Bodwit, Bol Bloodwit, the first full moon when sun is in Pisces, full moon in Virgo, early spring, and herb is broom, Cytisus scoparius. New beginnings, creativity, manifest manifestation, fresh perspective. Finding solutions. Moon of activation. Goddess Bloodwet. The first full moon. Uh, first full moon when sun is in Aries. Full moon in Libra, mid spring. Order, victory, responsibility, outward growth, conscious mind balance, relationship, clarity. Then we have the moon of revelation. This is beautiful and I think I've got a feeling that is unity. Okay, let's have a look. Bloodwed, that's the goddess. Full moon when sun is in Taurus. Full moon in Scorpio, late spring. Herb, nettle. Keywords, rejecting expectations, attaining goals, inward growth, acknowledging the shadow, freeing the unconscious, bucking tradition, living one's truth, transformation, and liminality. Then we've got the moon in of liberation, and I think that will be summer by the looks of it. Okay. That's also goddess blood wet, a moon, first full moon, when sun is in Gemini, yes, summer, full moon Sagittarius, early summer, and the herb is red clover, Trifolium pretanus, 
keywords transformation evolution personal fulfillment wisdom freedom clear sight unity of opposites personal sovereignty and then we have hold on we've got a couple more to go <laughs> then we have the moon goddess or the moon of dedication and the goddess is Rhinon first full moon in Sun is in Cancer full moon in Capricorn mid summer perseverance courage straightforwardness focus poise asking for you your needs asking for what you need relinquishing control letting go of control issues moon of consum consummation consummation moon of consummation coming together goddess rhinon the full moon when sun is in leo full moon in aquarius late summer love balance unity acceptance honor law and tradition tradition moon, moon of purification the goddess rhinon full moon when sun is in virgo full moon in pisces early autumn patience with yourself and others inner strength weathering injustice accepting what cannot be changed courage to meet any challenge endurance in the face of suffering grace under pressure transitions now we're going on to the moon of reconciliation and what I've just noticed is that with this suit um, we have moon 12 moon 12 moon 11 and the name of the moon but it's very small so that's why I didn't realize it earlier moon of reconciliation that's the goddess Rion moon first full moon when Sun is in Libra full moon in Aries season mid autumn the herb is mother wort Le Leonius Ross Cardica and that is the herb and it's beautiful and the card description is reunited in joy Riona holds her son Prideri in her loving arms at last crowned queen and restored to her rightful place Ryan fully embodies her sovereign nature having come through the trials of with new wisdoms and boundless compassion keywords unity unite unity forgiveness balance restored joy culmination abundance sovereignty realized okay then we have the moon of reflection and that is number 13 Godde goddess Branwen and this is the moon is blue moon the second full moon in any sun sign season timeless the herb is wood Isiatis tinctoria and the keywords I won't go into the card uh, description because the it's already the third video I hope you will be watching this keywords balance contemplation transformation resolving oppositions recognizing patterns seeing the big picture messages from the other world and that's the last card in chapter 4 then we are going into chapter 5 the cycle uh, 5 or chapter 5 the nine Morgans nine sisters rule thereby the right of birth over those who come to them from other lands their leader is more skilled at healing and more beautiful than her sisters 
she is called Morgan and has learned the properties each plant has to cure sick bodies. She also has the power of changing her shape and of flying through the air on strange wings like Daedalus. I suppose that will be a mythical uh, monster or something like that, animal. She can be at the breast Chartres or Pavia whenever she wishes or glide from the sky onto our shores. Okay, we've got the law keeper. And let's have a look because I did go wrong with the tape because it broke off. And we have got the law keeper. She's beautiful. The law keeper Morgan reveals herself here in the form of an elder woman accompanying her singing with the harp with her messenger raven in attendance as her fingers pluck the strings they weave a web of law and memory indeed images of transformation of blood wet swirl around morgan's head evoked by the telling of her tale the key words creativity law wisdom knowledge memory history transmitting teachings continuity instruction and these don't have numbers again then we have the law keeper right the law keeper mm. card description the law keeper Morgan reveals herself here in the form of a young woman holding space before the entrance of a sacred grove or Nimeton Nimeton in her right hand it's like a baton. She br uh, brandishes a sword while in her left holds aloft a chariot wheel. A messenger raven is in attendance. Keywords truth, balance, justice, pre pre president, morali morality, ac uh, advocacy, activism, meditation, clarity, objectivity living in the right action so that's like the card of justice a little bit then we have the emissary and the emissary um, card the uh, description is the emissary Morgan reveals herself here in the form of a middle-aged woman the characteristic blue and black garb of her rank covered by a traveling cloak as she stands with her O Ohamnitched walking stick in the prow of the barge of Avalon. The outline of the holy island is visible. Behind her, as she journeys across the lake, embarking upon a mission with a messenger raven in attendance, keywords, communication, networking, connections, journey, dis diplomacy, relationships, clarity, and truth. Then we go on to the ooh, one, two, three, fourth sister, and that is Artisan. Artisan. Card description The Artisan Morgan reveals herself here in the form of a young woman working at a weight loom. Engaged in her craft, she weaves a tapestry in emblazed with an image of the moon. Wise trickle trixicle a tri triple spiral that symbolizes the act of creation in all three realms and all three aspects being body, mind, spirit, a messenger raven in attendance. This is a very dark card in colour, but the raven is sitting on the loom. Create keywords, create creative creativity, manifestation, skill, service, practicality, support, beauty, equity, equity, transformation, and exchange of energy. Then we go to the fifth, the hearth keeper, the hearth keeper. Card description: The hearth keeper Morgan reveals herself here in the form of a middle-aged woman seated before the hearth fire at the center of the wattle and dow round the house. 
she holds an infant in her arms as she stirs the content of the cauldron hanging over the fire in storage baskets filled with provisions and supplies stand near the hearth stones as a messenger raven stands in attendance and the raven is just in the corner by the fire keywords sacred center community home foundation nurturing tradition wise use of resources continuity kinship parenting nourishing keeping the center it's very hot here still we are in a drought really here in Holland okay let's get back to the cards guardian card description the guardian Morgan reveals herself here in the form of an elderly woman elder woman standing upon the earthwork hench monument with an ancient circle of stones dominating the landscape behind her she projects a quiet strength as she stands rooted in her space holding her staff with a practic precise inner calm flying overhead a messenger raven is in attendance keywords boundaries guardianship protection natural balance sacred space inter interrelation interrelationships ad advocacy then we have the seer and the seer is like a high priest the seer morgan re uh, reveals herself here in the form of a middle-aged woman crying into the cauldron she cradles in her hands spirals of energy emerging from its depths curling around the vessel before merging with the darkness of the star studded night sky looking on from her shoulder a messenger raven in attendance in keywords intuition receptivity self-trust inner wisdom clear sight expanded perception clear percep perceptive perspective sorry seeing the pattern spiral service acting as channel then we have the eighth and that is healer healer a beautiful card card description the healer morgan reveals herself in the form of an elder woman engaged in grinding up plants in order to make herbal medity medicines some of the tools of her craft line the walls of her wattle and doubt round the house dedicated to healing arts a messenger raven is in attendance the keywords healing wholeness harvest spiritual midwifery support skill unity balance of beauty of body sorry balance of body mind and soul it's um, I've had to redo this so I'm getting a bit tired sorry about that darlings but I'm I'm so into these cards it's always with the the decks that I'm getting late it's beautiful okay the last card is ritualist ritualist the card description the ritualist Morgan reveals herself here in the form of a young woman standing in a stone circle like Stonehenge with her arms outstretched to the moon her eyes closed as the throes of ritual ecstasy overtake her <coughs> the moon shines brightly in the velvet night sky superimposed with the faith of God this the face of the goddess that's the light whose undulating energies stream down like moonbeams to envelope the Morgan surrounding her body with light a messenger raven in assistance the key words words mysteries connection with the source 
cycles, ceremonies, time, ritual of pi rites of passage, initiation. And now we're going on to chapter 6. The three realms, the Celtic cosmology, the whole of existence is organized in these three parts, the realm of sky, the realm of land, the realm of sea, everything around us can also be found within us, for we are a part of nature, not apart from it. As such, there is a corresponding reflection of the three realms within us, governing the mental, physical and emotional aspects of the self. Understanding how to navigate this inner landscape with consciousness is the key to mastery on the voids of self-actualization and personal sovereignty. Bringing the three realms into balance within us gives us with ability to harmonize with the macrocosmic three realms that exists all around us the ultimately we obtain and ultimately we obtain the clarity to recognize that there is no difference between that which is within and that which is without all is one and the realm of sky that's where we start off with. Um, like I said, I had to restart it. Description of this card is a leftward leaning standing stone evokes the form of the golden ray of the Orwin symbol. A stylish Celtic eagle is carved into the face of the stone representing the realm sky and the whole of myrrh is framed by an oak boat tied with the cloth pair ribbons called clouties, whose intentions are carried up to the gods by the winds that stream through them. The keywords divinity, transcendent, transcendence, perfection, wholeness, celestial patterns, the higher self, the soul, the upper world, the realm of the sky, the gold ray, the mind, the future, and this is also giving time and creative thought. It goes on to the quest and the definitory meaning, but I'll just skip these because I'm just going to give you the analytical description of the card. Okay, this is the realm of the land. A standing stone tapers upright, evoking form of the central. Or the crystal ray of the all Orwin symbol, a, sin a stylized image of the Celtic tree of life and carved into the face of the stone representing the realm land and the wild rose bush arises from the base of the myrrh. Key words, the material world, the physical plane, survival, abundance, manifestation, life and middle world. The crystal ray represents the present. Then we have the realm of sea, and that card description is a right-leaning standing stone evokes the form of a silver ray and of the Owen symbol. A stylized Celtic salmon is carved into the face of the stone, representing the realm of sea, and the whole of Minerva is framed by the waves of the ocean beyond it. Keywords, emotions the unconscious, intuition, wisdom, the shadow, the other world, ancestors, death and rebirth, memories, the past, the lower world, the silver ray. And then we go on to chapter 7. And chapter 7 is called the cycle 7, the Celtic journey. Okay, the Celtic nature of the universe reveals itself to us in many ways. Depending on our perspective, we can ex access the cosmological flow of things through several filters. While it is the nature of cycles to be repetitive and often, without be 
be beginning or end, we can best understand the whole by first breaking it down into di discrete divisions, the patterns of which describe a specific organizing principle and its related en energetics in Celtic traditions. There are several inter interations of the cycle which show up again and again in law and legend. There is the whole, the dualities of light and dark, the sacred triad, the pentatonic division of the landscape, the triple triplicity of the mindfold, and the thirteen houses of the lunar year. Each division of cycle represents a particular energy and tells are something about how different aspects of the universe relate to each other. From this we can gain insight into our own process and better understand the nature of the changes we seek to implement in our lives. The first card is the source. An ancestral burial mound stands silhouetted against the darkness of the night sky, yet within it is kindled the purity of source, which sends a shaft of illumination out from within its utrine, utrine, utrine depths, crowned with the Sheila Nagit displaying her holy vulva as the form of the Yonak doorway. The Bronze Age pa uh, passage tomb exists between the worlds, bringing, bridging past, present, and embodied the mystery of death and rebirth. Now, if you know the story and the history or the mytholo mythological, mythological story behind the, um, the uh, traditional tarot, then this is the fall. The fool was born from a cave, and that was the vulva or the opening, the birth canal for the fool between the two worlds, the underworld, the darker world, and this world, and that's where the journey begins. That's why this card is also the card of rebirth. Right, beautiful. How you can, I can see the connection between this oracle and the traditional tarot and the mythological and uh, stories and the history behind the tarot. This is lovely. This is really nice. Shadow of Sovereignty. Okay, now this is the cauldron, a finely wrought cauldron representing the dark half of the cycle is overlain by the toric of a great beauty, symbolizing the light half of the cycle, the vessel of the cauldron of becoming the crucible within which the shadow aspects of the self being transformed. The toric is being gaped. The toric is the bracelet, or the shape of the bracelet. Uh, let me have a look. The toric is being gaped with the balancing energies of apple and a corn finals in the mark of sovereignty, sovereign self. Reclaim with every choice made in, in authenticity. Together they represent the interplay between potential and actualization and the center of their overlap forms. The pathways that lead to connecting with source. Keywords, balance, duality, light and darkness. Union of opposites, death and rebirth, growth and transformation. We go to the three cauldrons, and this looks reminds me a little bit of the chakras and the the, the holy trinity. Um, that's where you can relate it to in um, the other in the normal way of life. Well, normal. What is normal? Normal doesn't mean anything. I think the vic um, vicars and pagans and uh, is a normal way of life because you're working with Mother Earth. And that's what we all should do. 
Description. A hooded princess sits cross-legged in a deep meditation, emerged in these three rays of Owen, which stream down from the uh, triparite source to cascade over and through her in the state of completion. Complete illumination, the priestess experiences the bliss of uh, that comes when each of the three cauldrons within her are in the full upright position. She has full access to all of their gifts, and the three cauldrons are air, water, and earth. It's just a way of speaking. Within her fully upright position, she has full access to all the gifts. In her right hand, she holds the silver branch, a symbol of the inner quest, and in the left, she holds the toric of sovereignty representing her connection to her authentic self. Now this also reminds me of the native Indians going into the tent to cleanse themselves and become one with the source. Divinity, God, doesn't matter. Keywords, energy, meditation, clarity, enlightenment, spiritual growth, healing, abundance, inspiration, right living actualization and balance it's like cleansing so it's so beautiful how everything comes together okay and then we have the five seeds of wisdom surrounded by the limbs of apple tree that is flowering leaving fruiting and bare a cleaved apple reveals the five pointed star of seeds that dwell within one of the sacred letters in the tree Ogham. The apple is universal symbol of the knowledge and wisdom and legends its name to Avalon. The forbidden food. Okay. It's quite an extensive explanation like you can see and it's about one and a half page long. Then we go to the Nine Fault Sisterhood. Okay. The Nine Morgans of Avalon stand around a pill rimmed cauldron, warming the brew with their breath. A mystical vapor fills the air, and an interlaced nine pointed star forms on the surface. of the excelsior of wisdom arising from the depth of the cauldron. The keywords inspiration, intuition, prophecy, poetry, change, sisterhood. Beautiful! And then the last card is the silver wheel. And here you can see the 13 moons. Right? And that's like the wheel of life, the wheel of fortune. And you've got the flowers there. Now, this is a magical card. I love this. And this is the card cycle, the cy cyclic journey, the 13 moons of Avalon, Goddess Orion Hod, moon, moon cycle of the cycle, the total lunar eclipse, Herbal, Herb, Queen Anne's Lace, Darkorgus Carota, Queen's Anne's Lace, and I didn't know this, Queen Anne's Lace, or Wild Carrot, is a powerful woman's alley. It, ally. It is a uterine stimulant and its seeds, if pro, uh, properly researched, can be used as a form of natural contraception. This spindle-shaped plant has diuretic properties. and remedies many complaints of the urinary system, including kidney stones and cystitis. Wild carrot helps with indigestion, indigestion, constipation and flatulence. When witchcrafting this herb, by be sure to distinguish it from the very similar uh, looking but wholly poisonous hemlock plant. One way to tell is that Queen Anne's lace has a hairy stem while that of the hemlock is sweet. 
the count description surrounded by the trans uh, transition transitioning phases of the total lunar eclipse argent hued Aryan hog glows against the backdrop of the night sky holding her thirteen spoked namesake silver wheel before her she rises above a field of Queen Anne's lace the keywords cycles bound and rebound growth change cosmonology patterns and time wow that is absolutely beautiful then we have the last chapter divination and transformation performing a reading with the Avalonian Oracle can be structured or organic as processes process as you desire you can create your own layouts utilize one of the layouts presented here that have been specifically designed for use with this deck or you may simply approach the cards with your needs in mind open to whatever experience they may have in store for you whatever you choose here are some suggestions for ways to incorporate the Avalonian Oracle as part of your spiritual practice so let's just move that there so these are spreads we've got the single card draw we've got the Avalonian circle the healing spread the, uh, the cycle of the Sun insight into the year to come uh, cycle of the moon insight into the month to come cycle of the self insight into your personal process so this is the Avalonian circle design spread and you've got all the cards one two three four uh, meanings of them you can see um, resolution is number four number one is descent um, integration is number five confrontation three is emergence etc uh, etc et so it is one two three four five I have used this but I didn't know this ex was uh, a, a real um, spread but I do the Monday Wednesday Friday Saturday and sun Sunday and the overall energy you and this is the four card spread that is the Owen uh, spread Let's have a look. That's a four card spread. Then you have, again, you've got what each card means and the layout and how to do it. You've got the nine card spread and you've got all the uh, details there. The three card, another de three card uh, realms spread as the air, fire, and uh, uh, sorry, water earth and uh, sea sea land and sky spread then you've got the two card spread that's the mirror spread uh, the three cauldron spread the cauldron is also again uh, of wisdom vocation and warming Okay, then you've got the five card spread again, and other sort of spread. That's the five seat spread. Then you've got tools, tools for connection and growth, and that's what it tells you. I hope you, and then you have the. Uh, bibliography of the book and the thanks and all the people that were that's the references of where the information was found okay I hope you have enjoyed this really little series of review and I certainly have and I've already learned in this short time 
quite a bit about the Oracle deck and I will definitely be using this. Now I'm going to shake the cards. It's the stock is quite sound, quite more sturdy than some cards I have. And they do shake very nicely. They're a glossy finish, they're not reversible. Uh, you can't see what's the bottom or the top because it's the same thing at the top and the bottom. Okay, and they're the same size as an Oracle card. <laughs> Lovely. I hope you have enjoyed this review and if you would like to see more of these or see them again then you can see them here on, you, on Charlie's Angel Tarot and also uh, Charlie Angel's Tarot uh, on YouTube and you'll be able to see them back on a lot of media like Pinterest or Facebook and I hope you've enjoyed them. Take care. God bless.